Okay, I'd like to call this meeting to order, please. Thank you, everybody, for coming out on this January evening. Getting a bit colder, John. A little bit. Winter time's coming. But uh, we do appreciate everybody coming out for our first meeting of the new year. Uh, let's start our meeting, if you would, by uh, going to play the place. <coughs> have our first item of uh, business be the approval of the minutes of the December 16, 2014 meeting. Do you have a motion, please? So moved. Mr. Wilkerson, second. Oh, sorry. Mr. Kirk, first. And long yesterday? Yes. yes. Okay. All right. Uh, did anyone sign in tonight, Mr. McGee? No, Okay. Nobody signed in to speak to us. So we'll go to our presentation reports. Uh, Greg Lambert is going to talk to us about the Lake County High School baseball field update and future projects. Thank you. Um, good evening, everyone. I'm going to step back here to the computer and do this PowerPoint. Um, I'm the head baseball coach at Lincoln County High School. If you don't know, I think uh, I know everybody up here. Um, this gentleman over here is Paul Roach. He is um, one of my volunteer assistants. Coach Roach is a chief of police at Mount West Community College in Huntington. And I have two other coaches uh, that can't be here tonight. One is Micah Canterbury, the PE teacher at Lincoln County High School, and John Bird, who was uh, kind enough to put this uh, PowerPoint together. He is a uh, um, forest fire investigator for the Department of Natural Resources. So I have a, an outstanding staff, and I may say that Coach Roach has, is probably the most senior coach at Lincoln County High School. He's been at been with uh, the baseball program since consolidation. Um, anyway, we want to, this is, um, I'm not here to ask for, for money. I want to make that, make that clear, but what I'm looking for is your blessing. And I want to get you updated on things that we've done. Um, this will be my sixth year at Lincoln County High School. And when I was uh, hired here, we, we didn't have very many facilities. I remember Mr. Snyder, when he asked me to take the job, one of the very first things he said was, please build me a facility. We need a place to play ball. And that's one of the things that, that we have worked real hard on. And um, we felt that uh, from the beginning, in order for us to get it to com a competitive stage of athletics, that we needed to uh, do something in order to attract and uh, get the kids that we have in Lincoln County to come out and play uh, baseball. Because uh, quite honestly, it was a depressing atmosphere over there. Uh, when I got hired, we had two dugouts and a fence around the field. That's pretty much all we had. And at that time, when we first consolidated, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't imperative initially to, to get a concession stand, but shortly thereafter, they, but, well, I'm gonna back up because Basically, all the money that was made in, the, in the, the programs was put into one fund, and then it was divvied out as it was needed. And eventually, it went to where each program was self-sustaining. So we had to get on the ball and get us a way to make money so that we could, uh, we could provide for ourselves. This is our logo, and I'll start with uh, uh, the, our history. was consolidated in 2006. Uh, funding was allotted to be self-sufficient. We had uh, field fences and dugouts were built in 2007 by the previous coach, the first coaching staff. Uh, we had no lights. There was no way to play night games. So uh, night games initially were played at the Hamill Lions Club Field, which is not designed primarily for baseball. And we've also played a game or two at Guyan Valley High School Field. Uh, from 2007 to 2012, the average number of players on our team was 11 to 15. The number of players would drop to a minimum because we had no JV. And the reason for that was 
I'm trying to be quick, Mr. Minkiff. The reason for that was we, you know, we would get sometimes 15, 16, 17 kids come out for baseball. Well, when, you, when you're playing, you know, and you practice and you put the work in, you know, kids need to get, get a chance to play and perform and show what they can do. And what was happening was is we had no lights, so we had no ability to play any JV games at home, none. And uh, at that time, uh, our whole schedule was Mountain State Conference games. We were going to Parkersburg and Ripley and Greenbrier East and Beckley and places like that, so it wasn't... It really wasn't uh, something that we could consider to go down and play two games and then get home at two in the morning and on a school night. So we, we just weren't able to play the games to keep our JV kids involved. So inevitably by spring break, whenever we get to spring break, we would end up having three or four kids just disappear. You know, they, you know, they weren't getting to play, so they would, they would disappear. And by the end of the year, we were usually down to nine, 10, 11 kids because uh, we weren't able to provide the, the, the innings for these kids to show and the opportunity to show what they can do. This is a photo of, uh, this is an overhead photo from Google Earth of our field, and this was like a year after I took the job, maybe a couple years afterwards. You can see we have, this is our backstop here, and we have portable, a small set of portable bleachers that were brought in for the home side and a large set of portable bleachers was brought in for the visitor side. And the reason for that was that the visitors brought many more people to the games than our home team did. So we tried to take care of the visitors. Now, we had no restroom facilities. Somewhere out here near the, so the soccer field, we had porta potties put in. And we had also, the softball team was nice enough to allow us to use their restrooms. So we had to, we had to direct people down to the right field line to the girls softball field for restrooms and it, and that also made it tough for our kids, our young men to compete because we were never we've never since we've opened our school been able to host a tournament game. Never. There's certain criteria you have to have in order for the SSAC to order to host tournament games. You gotta have concessions, you gotta have bathrooms, you have to have a scoreboard, you have to have a PA system. Uh, and I was under the impression that you have to have lights, but I found out this past year that they can waive that. So we've reached the point in our facilities now that we're finally, this year, we get to host a sectional tournament game. We get to host the first game. The second game will be at Hurricane, and if game three is necessary, it'll be back at Lincoln County. So we're finally at the point where our kids can enjoy some type of home field advantage. This is a photo now, from, well, uh, this summer, we're standing on the pitcher's mound, and you can see our concession stand now that we put up. Right here's three serving windows. We have the upstairs, and over here are our new set of uh, chair back bleachers, which I'll go over with you in a moment. This is the inside of our concession stand. Everything you see in there has been donated or scavenged by us. We were able to get these tables from uh, one of your storage rooms here at the, at the central office. Coca-Cola donated the, the uh, cooler here, and we had donations of the fridge, stove. Uh, our, uh, Sar Colonel Plumley gave us this uh, freezer and microwave and things like that. This is the upstairs concession. That's what it looks like right now. This is our plan for this area is this is a bathroom area and we've already got shower, commode, sink and everything in this area. This is going to be a storage area for uniforms, equipment and my small little office area. And this area here will be an umpire's dressing area so umpires don't have to come to games and dress out in the parking lot. And one of the reasons for this is safety. Because if you have a controversial call during the ball game, you do not want parents jumping umpires out the parking lot when they're trying to get out of, the, out of the field. And I know it's happened and it does happen. So one of the things we're trying to do is improve the safety of our, uh, our activities so that umpires can come, have a good comfortable place to dress uh, and uh, be prepared, get prepared for the game. After the game they can go in, take a shower, get cleaned up, let people leave and then they can leave at their leisure. Lincoln County High School, uh, uh, in 2011 we installed, uh, one of the first things we did when I got the job uh, was we installed a higher fence and windscreen in left field. 
I remember sitting at the dugout with Coach Roach about the third or fourth game into the season, and after about the 15th or 16th home run that went out against us, I told him the first thing I'm doing is raising that fence. And we did. We raised the fence from 8 feet to 18 feet. This is a 200-foot section here. And we purchased this beautiful windscreen that I think is awesome because when you cross the, the bridge at Lincoln County High School, that's one of the first things you can see. It's really huge. And, uh, and we're really proud of it. And we get a lot of compliments on that. Uh, next thing we did, actually, I'm going to back up again. We went 2011. In 2012, because we skipped one, in 2012 we started work on our concession stand. Now, I only had a few volunteers at the time, so we pretty much spent a, a good whole year, a year and a half, putting that thing up. Virgil Brogan, Bob Tooley, uh, Rick Taylor, myself, uh, and um, uh, Thomas Tooley, we spent a whole summer a whole summer, every day of the week, working on that. And in 2013, we started installing running water, <coughs> bathrooms, and sewage to our concession. This is a picture of our bath of our bathrooms. We're not, you know, as we were finishing, or it's believe me, it looks a whole lot better than that right now. And this is a, a photo of uh, the running of the. I'm assuming that's the sewer line. Mm -hmm. And that's all volunteer work. The equipment there, we secured volunteers, people in the community to do that. And then in two, also in 2013, we started purchasing seats, uh, chairback seats for our, for our stadium. I was able to, uh, to purchase 212 of these chairback seats. We got those chairback seats out of the Baltimore Orioles Stadium, uh, Camden Yards. And uh, there's a lot of history behind those seats. I was able to, uh, to work a deal out with the company was they were pulling them out. We were able to purchase those seats for $12 a seat. And um, now if you go online, you can go to Archer Stadium Seating online and you can go look at these seats. There's two different styles of these seats. If you want to buy one of these seats right now, the low, the, the low chair back seats, these are the high ones. You can see they come up above your shoulder blade. The low chair back seats sell for $325 per seat, per seat right now. And the high chair back seats like the ones we have, they sell those for $625 per seat. And I paid $12 a seat for them. We got 212 of them. Somebody suggests we need to sell them and then <laughs> and maybe buy something else, you know. But the good thing, there's, and they come, to, they come with a certificate of authenticity that we're going to have made up into plaques, uh, metal plaques to put on the uh, bleachers on both sides. Those seats were actually in the stadium when uh, Cal Ripken broke Lou Gehrig's uh, consecutive uh, games played streak. So we have an, a certificate of authenticity from the Baltimore Orioles stating that, that we're going to put, display on our seats. And this also is us uh, putting our seats together inside of our hitting area. If you've never been to their hitting area, it's you go down the hall and you come here, turn right, go down, you see a blue sign on the door, and you can and walk on, you feel free to come in anytime and check it out. This is a I've kind of neglected this this is a, a side project that we were doing all along while we had these other things going. We were able to get this turf for from a, a, a carpet company in Georgia and we were able to get that very cheap, about three thousand dollars. And typically you get something like that, you're looking at fifteen, twenty thousand dollars, but they took care of us. Apparently they were blessed, you know, we were blessed by uh, being being fortunate. But we're very proud of this. We can slide two batting cages out and, and we also over in this area we have a dressing area. So it's a really nice room. We've been able to hold, we've held two college uh, baseball camps inside this room in the last year and a half. Uh, West Virginia Tech has came down twice, once doing a pitching camp and once a, uh, this is a full baseball camp in the winter. So we're really proud of that and we've been told by numerous coaches that have come in that we have the nicest indoor hitting facility in the state, uh, excluding WVU and Marshall. That's what they tell me. And we're very proud of that. Now, the next thing is the construction of our bleachers. 
as you can see, we have a lot of volunteers. Now, that this, this person, that person, that person, those are parents. Now, the rest of these guys, these are players. These are students that came out. They've come out, and they've worked hard to... Uh, to put this, uh, to put our field together, and here's another picture of the uh, of the process, <coughs> and the next step in the process before we uh, pour the concrete for the bleachers, and then there's the finished uh, product. If you uh, have not been down there to see it, we have 98 bleachers on this side, we have 98 bleachers on the home side, and then we have the remaining 40, I think 16 right around the edge here. We're very, very proud of that. This concrete, this concrete, um, Lincoln County High School, thanks to Mr. Snyder, he he took care of the of one half of it, and the board, thanks to Mr. Minkiff and Ms. Uh, Lucas, took care of the other half, and I, we very much appreciate that. Uh, I went to uh, Mr. Snyder, told him, I said, listen, I've got some money, but we've got other projects. If you could just help me a little bit. He's like, Hey, if we can make it happen, we'll make it happen. Went to Mr. Mickiff, he had the same, the same attitude, and we certainly, certainly appreciate that. That helped us so much, this concrete area around here. It helped us to be able to put money in other areas. 2013, we purchased and constructed a scoreboard, and that was with the help of the Lincoln County Commission. This is Armstrong, uh, Arm, the Armstrong uh, volunteered their trucks to come in, and their ladder trucks to come in and put this uh, massive scoreboard up. I don't know if you can tell it right now, but the next picture you'll see. Our, and we've been able to do a lot of things in our field because of volunteers of people in the community. Armstrong has been wonderful for us. They came in and constructed this. And here is our scoreboard. Now, it may not look big on this picture, but I'll tell you this. This is a 30-foot wide scoreboard, and it's 15-foot tall. This is a massive scoreboard, and we were we we purchased that for about fourteen thousand dollars. County commission donated to us. One thing that's awesome about this scoreboard is this right here. This is a pitch speed indicator. So every time a pitcher pitches the ball, it displays the pitch speed right up here. So that has been very popular, and we can say that we have the absolute best scoreboard anywhere in this area. And I have, I have uh, Spring Valley High School uh, had called me several times this uh, over the uh, summer trying to get our information because they're trying to do the same thing. Also, Huntington High School, after we put ours up, has a scoreboard with a pitch speed indicator. But we're extremely proud. You can see our advertisement here. The uh, county commission gave us 14000 for this. Well, we were able to sell these, these signs here for... State Farm gave us, uh, State Farm and uh, Parks and Recreation donated, uh, I think, $3,000 a piece to put signs up. Armstrong, we put a sign up because they have helped us. We donated that sign to them because they, we couldn't have put it up without them. And Coca-Cola. And this, this, um, this big sign right here is from the metal shop in Salt Rock. I keep wanting to say Precision. What is the name of that? It's... Precision coating, is that the name? Or Tri-State coating. Tri-State coating, yes, Tri-State coating. The <laughs> owner of that company right there, his son played ball for me at Guyon Valley many years ago. And Coach Bird and myself went to him to get technical advice on what we needed to be able to install this scoreboard. And he uh, once we you know figured out what we needed, he said, hey, you know, I'll just donate what you need. So he donated three 30-foot 8 inch I beams, which was, I don't know how much they cost, but Coach Bird and the people I've talked to, it's in the tens of thousands of dollars that they donated just for the, to, for the I beams for this. So we, we gladly put them a sign up on our scoreboard. And uh, they also donated, um, uh, they also donated the fixtures on the bottoms of our seats. See, we had to have fixtures to put on the bottom of our seats that cost $25 a piece. We needed 300 of them. And that was going to cost us over $7,000. $7,500 for the, the hardware that goes on the bottom of our seats. And we bought one for $25 from a, from a company, took it to the uh, machine shop, and they fabricated all the rest and donated them to us. So 
they donated at least twenty thousand dollars to us, just just like that. And uh, in 2014, we purchased brick dust for and started reconstruction of our uh, base pass. This is a picture of, of our field, the way it looks now. Now I have some requests out there. I know this is not on agenda, but I'm trying to get AstroTurf or field turf for our field. And I've got some requests out there from some very rich people, and I'm still waiting back to see if, uh, if they're going to help us out on that. That's a, a, you can see how the baselines are all receded and washed out. This is a few, uh, maybe a few months later, you can see that it looks a whole lot better now. A lot straighter, and we actually cut, we brought in sod and transplanted it all right there. This is an overhead shot of our field again, and you can see the layout of the field because we're going to the next section is the next thing we worked on, and you can see how short left field is and compared to right field. This is probably a typical size of a baseball stadium, and because at the time when we built, that's all we had, uh, we had to make do. So we have a big black monster like Boston has a green monster. Now I want you to notice down the sidelines, the foul lines, the right field, and the left field foul lines, how we have a big dog leg right there. Well, this past summer, we started working on straightening that out. The last few years, we've been, uh, year by year, we've been bringing in dirt, time after, you know, month after month, year after year, over in this area and this area. Anytime we were able to get dirt, we gradually built the dirt up so we could place the fence. And now you can see down the left field line, we've, the, the fence used to bow all the way in here and around. That was our foul area. So we took that fence down and straightened it out and put a new fence up and re-sewed re uh, everything. And this is the right field line, the same way you can see how our fence bowed around right there. Uh, this is our home dugout. We've uh, poured concrete here because we're, and, and this is paid for, by the way. We've already paid for this. Uh, everything that we're gonna do here is already paid for. We just haven't finished it yet. We're building an, equip, an equipment room right there to house our lawnmower that we just was able to get and our numerous uh, numerous gardening equipment that we have to use on our field. This is the home, the other side of the home dugout we've built. We poured concrete here because we're trying to create a barrier between the dugout and the player and the fans. We don't like parents and fans coming up and talking to our players during the, during the game and distracting them. All right, Lincoln County High School, 2014 construction of road for drainage and lighting system. This, uh, this past uh, summer and fall, I don't know how well you can see that or not. Can I do this? All right, well, all right, you can see this is behind the left field wall right here. We came in and dug all this out in anticipation of possibly being able to install lights in the future and also improve our draining because we were having water that was running down off the hill and going out onto our field. And it was just, we were getting fungus and diseases on our, on our <coughs> field and we weren't able to control it. I even, I probably wasted $2,000 in my first year getting green sin, I think it was green sin to come in and uh, fertilize and work on our field, but it really was not a, it wasn't very good. Well, it didn't work because we just couldn't, we couldn't keep the water off, but now we've done that. We've also got this cleaned out, and of course, whenever the, we start getting some vegetation, we anticipate that's gonna really improve the look of things. Now, our future projects is lights, and we're not here asking for lights. We uh, have other, we have other way, you know, we have other things that we've got going on, and we have some people that, that might be able to help us with lights. Why do we need lights? To keep more students involved in baseball. We've outgrown our ability to uh, serve our participating athletes. In the past, dropout rate increased due to not playing enough, day, having enough daylight hours to schedule games and practice time, and also to keep the JV and middle school programs involved for success, for successful varsity players. Here's, a, here's something, this was a study done by the NCAA. It's an NCAA study. Study. Why do we need uh, why do we need lights to keep more students involved in baseball? Because, according to the NCAA study, 60% of high school students play sports. Boys more likely than girls. Don't know what that means other than the fact that probably there are more opportunities for boys, more teams for them to participate in. 
According to NCAA AA sta uh, studies, the average, uh, the average GPA of an athlete is a full point higher than non-athletes in the nationwide study. Anybody that uh, the average athletic GPA compared to non-athletic GPAs on average is one point higher. Also, according to NCAA studies, uh, people, students involved in athletes increased their graduation in college by 41%. So people that uh, were involved in sport athletics in high school were 41% more likely to graduate from college than non-athletes. Also, 92% less likely to do drugs, which leads to crime. And I can tell you this, as a parent, I try to, uh, to steer my children into sports, not because I wanted them to be pro athletes. If that would happen, it would be awesome. But honestly, I wanted them to be involved with kids that had higher standards. Because those, you know, myself personally, my best friends in the world are people that I played sports with growing up. And when, you're, when your friends are doing a certain thing, you know, peer pressure, if you've got friends that are doing drugs, chances are you may try it. If you've got friends that are doing homework, chances are you're going to do homework too. So, uh, you know, kids that are involved with athletics, they, we hold them to a higher standard. They have to keep their grades up. They have to act better in school. They just have to do more. And if you're involved in athletics, and your friends are involved in athletics, I feel personally that it, it uh, helps you to develop better as a citizen. Calls for lights. We've been research, researching that for the past year with multiple uh, companies, and the most effective bid is $95,000. I have that right here, that's Musco. And um, their bid was anywhere from 95 to 105, but Coach Bird has already pinned them down to 95,000. And I know when I was at Guyan Valley about 20 years ago, we put lights up there and it was nearly 90,000 then. So that's a pretty good price. Why is the, the lights so expensive? They are more expensive than softball because for a baseball field, you need a six pole system. You need 44 light fixtures and the poles are twice as tall as a typical softball field and tw twice as bright. And that's it. If anybody has any questions, and again, all I'm doing here, this is an informative presentation because I'm not here asking for anything. Maybe in the future if we needed a little bit of help, I would hope that we could come to you for, for that. We try very hard. We have a lot of pride in ourselves, and we try to do things ourselves. And uh, we do have some, uh, we have some things going on, and we feel like that we can, we can secure the money for these lights. We do. We feel like that we're, we're in a really good position to do that, but I wanted to keep the board informed of our intentions and let you see what we've been doing the last five or six years. We don't just stand around. We, we work. We work hard at it. And we haven't had the greatest win-loss record around here, but things are getting better, and we really feel really good about ourselves this year. We think that this is the year Lake County High School is going to step up and be an official Triple A baseball program. In the past, we just haven't. We haven't had, we haven't had uh, a lot of things. We haven't had the players. We had had the facilities, and a lot of times that goes hand in hand with one another. I know that I can tell you this, and I can't give you the exact dates, but I know one or two years after Lincoln County was consolidated, the West Virginia High School Football Player of the Year. This is all in the same year. Football Player of the Year, which is the Kennedy Award winner, Basketball Player of the Year, Girls Softball, Men's Basketball Player of the Year, Girls Softball Player of the Year, and Boys Baseball Player of the Year in the state of West Virginia, all the same year were Lincoln County students that went to other schools. Football Player of the Year was a boy from Duval that went to Madison. Basketball player of the year was a Hearts Creek boy that went to Logan. Baseball player of the year was a Duval boy that went to Nitro. And softball player of the year was a Hearts girl that went to Chapman. Now, we have athletes in this county. We have, we've had them for years. You guys that have been around, you know we have. Hamlin, Duval, Hearts, Guy and Valley, year after year after year, for, for as long as I can remember, every year, one of those schools 
or a lot of times two, two or more of those schools were legitimate state championship contenders in every sport. Now we, you know, other than our girls softball program, we've struggled. We've struggled mightily the last six years, well, the last seven, eight, nine years. And I really, really believe in the core of my soul that it's facilities. I really believe it. And I can tell you this much, that since we have done the work that we've done at our field, it's, we've tripled and quadrupled the amount of participation. I had, I went from having 10, 11 ball players, and in the off season, I was lucky if I could get two or three to come in and work out with us. Yesterday, we had 27 kids in here working out, and we still have 60 days before baseball even starts. We've had 25 to 30 kids every day since October the 27th coming in here and working out. And, and, and you know what? When they're here with us working out, they're not out on the streets with uh, the thugs. You know? So that's, our, that's, that's where we stand, and I just wanted to present that to you so that you will know this, because hopefully very soon in the near future, I want to be able to come before you and see if we can spend about $95,000 on lights that somebody donates to us. Does anybody have any questions? I'll, be, I'll feel, free to, feel free to throw them at me. I just have one question. Yes, sir. I have some comments. Mm -hmm. On the installation of the lights, is that just for the lights? Or, I mean, does the installation... Is That's that everything. Cost That's turnkey. Turnkey. Bringing them in, setting them up, everything. And, and by the way, this is a top-notch... We didn't go with second rate. We went with the highest, best system they had. Okay. And Coach Bird has been spearheading this lot, and Coach and Mr. Cummings has been helping me with this too, Rod Cummings. And uh, but Coach Bird has been spearheading this light project, and he is in a training session in Flatwoods tonight. He couldn't be here. But, uh, but this is a turnkey, you know, $95,000 <coughs> turnkey job. And once we get the lights, you know, well, we uh, listen. We have more projects, and that's not going to stop. We want to have a, we want to have a clubhouse, a, a dressing facility on the camp, on our at our stadium. We want to have an indoor practice area at our stadium, and um, we want astroturf. That's going to, and I've got bids on that too. Believe me, I've already had come, two or three different companies come in, give me bids, and that astroturf is going to cost us uh, about one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to do that. And I can't remember, Mr. Curry, did you go over with us to, I don't know if that was you, I, I know Mr. McCann, and, and a few years ago we went over, the very first year I got, we went over and toured Buffalo, Buffalo's stadium where they have uh, Buffalo Putman, I can't remember, I just can't remember, no, Mr. Curry. I, I had several, uh, me and you, and Mr. McCann was there, and somebody else, but anyway, we went over and checked it out, and uh, you know, everybody thinks that that, um, that the Toyota plant put their, their turf in, but they didn't. They did Hurricane, by the way, Hurricane High School, the way they were able to put their Astro turf in, I talked to their coach, what they were able to do, they went to uh, a bank. They found a bank, a local bank, that would, that would give them a uh, $150,000 loan, zero interest. $150,000 loan, zero interest, and then they went around to different businesses around the community and got different businesses to sign on to uh, taking, on, taking over that loan. So the school actually doesn't pay for it. It's businesses that are paying for their turf. Now, uh, and I know I didn't come here to talk to you about turf, but I can tell you this, Huntington High, uh, Hurricane, Buffalo, St. Albans is putting turf in this year. You know, and it's just it's just so much better. That's a that's one of our other future projects. I won't waste your t I won't delay you today about that. But I do have some. I you know, I'm not gonna say, but I have some some things in the fire toward getting that turf. It may happen. It may not. About fifty fifty. But anyway, just want to keep you keep you informed. Did you say you had some comments? Oh yeah. Okay, go right ahead. I'm I'm ready. Now, first of all. We appreciate a great deal of coming and explaining this to us. That's been one issue that we've had with various things going on in schools. Uh, plans that are being made, and we're oftentimes not the last people, but towards the end of that, 
the ones that find out about it. So we certainly appreciate the way you did your uh, proper progress of the whole thing is very good too, Coach. I appreciate that. I know the board does as a whole. Um, as you well know, uh, of course, I've run into you in the hall here, and Greg, or Coach Lambert, I should call him, or Mr. Lambert. All right. Uh, when you have people in school, you want to call them what they were when you have them in school. Uh, but, uh, you know, he's so enthusiastic about this. You know, I'll be over here for doing something, and he's going down the hall, and he's telling me, I'm working on that turf. I'm going to get some grant money. I yeah, mean, yeah, just, I'll talk to you about that. Yeah, it's yeah. true. So he's always, uh, you know, doing something, and, and that's great. And Coach uh, Roach, we appreciate all you all do and want to commend all of you for all the work you've done. Unfortunately, uh, when our high school was built, you know, the, the SBA did not provide funds for mm -hmm. uh, things, uh, athletic uh, facilities and all. And of course, uh, now they may be wavering a little bit, but I wouldn't count on it. But uh, what we've been able to, you know, I've always maintained the Lincoln County High School con uh, campus is a work in progress, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I'm sure Mr. Snyder <laughs> sees that better than I do each day. Uh, but, you know, sometimes you've got to take the bull by the horns and do it yourself. And I think you and guys, that's exactly what you're doing here. Uh, but uh, everything you're, you know, you know, I'm impressed with what you've done and been, well, you know, been out to the ball games. Now, maybe I sat in Cal Ripken's seat, who knows? Well, you never know. You never know. We'll, and, we'll, and I'll tell you this, we, <coughs> we, don't, we don't want to just be, and I mean this sincerely, we're not out to be adequate. We're not about being adequate. We want to be the best. Uh, honestly, and I'm, I'm not just, I'm not blowing smoke. I'm telling you that my goal is, you know, I would love to win a state championship in baseball. And I think that if we get things where, they are, where they're at or where they need to be, that we'll have a chance. But my goal is to provide um, a, a place that all Lincoln County people can be proud of. But when you walk in or drive over there or drive across that field or even drive by the campus and you look over there, I find myself when I drive by, I always have to look over. And we want the best. We want the best. And we've also, by the way, um, West Virginia Tech is, has already agreed that if they can work it out, they are going to play one of their regular season games at our stadium this summer or this, this uh, spring. One of our former players at Lincoln County High School was the starting shortstop at West Virginia Tech and a captain of the team. And he wants to come down here and play in front of the Lincoln County people so that the Lincoln County people can see one of their own play. And they're, they're very impressed with our facilities. I'm proud as I can be. I'm like a proud papa. And, uh, you know, we want to be the best. We want to look the best. We want to have the best. We want, there's no reason there is no reason why we can't be the best. There's no reason. Why be adequate when you can be the best? And that's our goal. So, Well, we, uh, once again, we totally agree with that. And, you know, maybe the time will come when we can all you know, cooperatively achieve some of these, you know, goals. We got to work together. Sit there. But, uh, you know, I, and I couldn't agree with you more that students that are involved in extracurricular activities and sports not only, like you say, I, I did the same thing. My friends were, that's what they did, and others did other things. And today, the world is even worse. If they are doing something in school, unfortunately, they may be doing something we don't want them to be doing. Yeah. Uh, so I, I couldn't agree with more with you there. Members of the board, anybody? Yeah. I'd just like to compliment you on what a fine job you all have done. Out Thank you, Mr. Perry. I certainly appreciate that very much. I have one question. Yes, sir. All this building and stuff been going on. Mm -hmm. But in the future, has the vocational class have been involved in anything? Well, uh, right now we have uh, one of the ways we paid for our seats. Our seats cost ten thousand dollars. Okay, we had to have ten thousand dollars to buy those seats, even though we got them cheap. We still had to come up with ten thousand dollars. So what we did was, is we sold naming right names, naming rights for the seats. <coughs> at $100 a piece. And um, we were able to sell over 100 seats, which, mean, which meant we paid for all of our seats by naming them. Now, the, um, the graphics art department, the graphics arts teacher, we've been working hand in hand with her for the last several months, and we've got her designs, and their, her class is working up the designs to put on the seats. Um, 
they're, they're, they're producing all the stickers that we're going to put on the seats to, for the people that uh, did that. Initially, we had the building construction uh, helping us at the very beginning, but to be honest, they were just moving too slow for us. They just didn't. And in the summer, in the summer where we do the bulk of our work, they're not in, you know, there's no school. So, you know, um, we've, been, we've tried our very best to involve uh, uh, and get help, and they've always been more than helpful. I know Mr. Snyder has never, ever turned me down on anything uh, that's related to working on our uh, facility over there. And, uh, but yeah, we have, uh, shoot, goodness, um, just trying to think. I know, like I said, the graphics arts department is working right now on that. And Shane Messinger and the building, the building construction worked for a while. But again, like I said, they were just, we just weren't getting enough done. We had to get going with it. And uh, we kind of took the bull by the horn there. Mr. Coach Roach, can you, is there anything else that I'm leaving out? As early on, excuse me, early on buildings and trades helped us like building uh, some bleachers for the dugout steps to the walk down dugout, stuff like that. But there again, the bulk of our projects, because our season starts in March, uh, we really can't do any construction till the summer and then it was hard for us to to get any any of that support because school's not in session but they have we've reached out and they've have have helped us with different small projects yeah yeah and any type of equipment uh, that we've needed to it's always been there for us yeah the ag reason. department we've used their yes. tractors and used their students to prep fields cut yes. grass different things like that so mm -hmm. anybody well, I'd just like to say with your attitude and your enthusiasm, you're going to succeed. Well, I you're certainly mean also, and I appreciate that. I know that we uh, we have high high expectations for ourselves, and um, we have high goals, and I don't know when we're going to reach them, but we're going to. Uh, we're going to somewhere, somehow. Rolling Stone gathers no moss. We want to keep rolling on down the road. I just want to say how much I appreciate all of the, uh, the work that you have made sure has occurred and without your leadership as, as a coach it would not have happened. Well, as uh, Mr. Wilkerson said, your enthusiasm and your passion for uh, wanting it to be the best, making sure that you are getting quality uh, materials and, and having everything done just to you know, certain standards. I so appreciate that and it is just wonderful for our students to be able to, uh, and parents to be able to see what, what you want to have. That's awesome. Well, I appreciate it so much, Ms. Lucas. I really do. Yes, you ever, sir. Do you ever take your team up to any of the power games? Yes, we did, actually. We went and watched um, West Virginia and Oklahoma play, was it last year? Last or year. Last year. Last year, yeah. We went and watched uh, West Virginia WV and Oklahoma play. Sit right on the front row, right, right by the... Uh, Kid from Newball, he was the star player from for WDU, a Lincoln County boy that went to Nitro, and he was their star player. What was his name? What's his Fraser. name? Fraser. 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 Okay. But yeah, we had we went to the Power Park games. Okay, appreciate everything. All right, thank you so much. Anything there, Carol? Did you have anything to say? Just to let Coach Lambert know that we've always been proud of him. Thank you so much. I think we all agree with that. And uh, once again, appreciate you keeping us up to date here, Coach. Coach, thank you for all your Thank you very yes, much. Sir. I'm going to get this out of here, Mr. McKibbs. Yeah, just get your camera out. Yeah, that's right.